oval bowl. I hand stitch, slow stitch, embroidery, whatever you want to call this. I took a um, quilt stencil and this is what the pattern looks on the stencil and I flipped it over and did the other side and I hand stitched it <coughs> using a multicolor uh, embroidery floss. So as you can see it's shaped like a eye oval. So I'm going to show you how I do it with um, rope and then I'm going to use uh, trellis lace. Trellis lace is a crochet lace. They call it ladder lace, trellis lace. But this is the one I'm going to use today. This one's a medium size. <coughs> So I'm going to wrap one row with this and I'm going to use some small wood beads. I'm thinking about using these around the top part of the bowl. So I got my hands full here and I use Walmart's rope. You can find this in the hardware section. It's a 3 16 It has a filler on the inside and cotton on the outside. It does make a sturdy bowl. And I don't have any problem sewing with this on my baby lock. Baby lock, she don't like too much thickness. But. And I make uh, pin cushions. That are a dress form. This one's mine. I use two different ones. One's usually in the living room and one by my sewing machine. Um, so if you're interested in purchasing a dress form, I put a button and a, <laughs> this is her head. It's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> and then I've got all my pins. Got a rubber band. Got some extra ribbon. I always save my ribbons. Because I add them to something. But anyway, if you're interested in those, you can email me or we'll get up. I got like, uh, I think 15 of them made. Different colors, prints. And I'm trying to get rid of some stash that I'm, things that I've made. Um. You can use it on your um, dresser, put hang jewelry on it, put your earrings on it. <clears throat> you don't have to use it as a pin cushion. But anyway, so how is everyone? Say hello when you come on. We're going to make a eye oval. An oval shaped, <coughs> excuse me. Alright, so how I do that, I don't know if y'all ever hear me say, save your scraps. Well, here's some scrap rope. Different lengths. They come in handy. You can make bracelets with them. Um, you can add them to a bowl. You can make those little puka knots, papa knots. I think they're called papa knots. Um, but today we're going to use it in our bowl. Hopefully this is enough, but I got a whole bunch of them over there. So when you get to the end of the rope and you still have some leftover rope, save it. Save it, save it. Comes in handy. Say hello, say hello. Don't want nobody to miss out how I do it. All right. So it looks like I got two different kinds of rope here. Maybe not. All right. Walmart rope always burn the ends of the rope so it doesn't fray. <coughs> so I'm 
going to push out some of that filler. It's a, some of it is a hard filler, some of it's like the, um, Amazon's rope has a different kind of filler altogether. Alright, cut that out, and all you do is just push it back out, and this will give you a nice flat, um, piece to work with, and it gives you a tighter curl. See how flat it gets? Gets. It helps to have fingernails. <laughs> Even though all my fingernails are starting to break. Cleaning. That's what I do for a living. I clean. That's why I'm always joking about the housekeeper. Alright, I need a pen. Okay. I stick a pin in it. I only put one pin in it. It holds it just fine. Say hello. <coughs> Say hello. We are live. So this is what I did. I used the... It was different oranges. And that is made from a... A quilt stencil. I traced it out and I stitched it by hand. Okay. Uh-oh. Guess what Laurel didn't do? I didn't make any bobbins. I still have blue on here. Oh, well. Give everybody a chance to come on while I make bobbins. Laurel needs to clean her sewing machine out. Alright, I'm pulling thread. I use these big cones. Because y'all know, making these bowls, you use a lot of thread. Alright, so I'm going to choose a light tan for what I'm doing. I'll put it on my little stand back here. Put it through the loop, bring it down. Put my arm in the way, my bad. Y'all get to see my freckles and age spots. <laughs> no, Laurel ain't getting old. All right, I got a pile. My pile is starting to fall over. Anybody else have that issue? Alright, I'm getting ready to make some bobbin on my other sewing machine. It's right here. I have a Simplexity sewing machine that I use to make my bobbin. My baby lock doesn't make bobbins anymore. Um, make sure y'all like and subscribe. That helps my channel out. I have like 4,000 people that view my my YouTube channel. Oops, I dropped it. And I have 1,900 subscribers. So I got 4,000 people that it hasn't subscribed. <laughs> but it helps my channel out when you push or click on that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It just helps my channel out. <clears throat> and all the thumbs up. All it does is uh, says, Hey, this is a good channel to watch. Uh-oh. All right, I got one more bobbin to make. one but yeah YouTube's funny um I started a join group or join on the YouTube but somehow or another nobody can find it um I'm not sure what's going on with that but 
Be patient with me. I'll figure it out. I'm I'm new to the YouTube thing. <coughs> Hang on, I'll, I'll check your comments in a second. This is the process of making bowls. <laughs> All right. Turn that sewing machine off. The sewing machine, the pedal, is starting to make a noise and get real hot. So I gotta get that fixed. I think it needs rewiring. But it gets real hot and starts making a noise. I think it's a 70 model. It's got six buttons on it. <laughs> it's hard to figure that sewing machine out. Um, Alright, I got my second bobbin. Uh oh. Always cut this little string off if you put it through the hole like I do. Because it'll... Get back here. Anyway, it'll make your sew machine nest up. Just cut that little string off. Alright, here we go. We'll get it done in a minute, y'all. Let me check comments. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, and thanks for all the nice comments everybody's been leaving. I'm enjoying it. It looks like y'all are enjoying the way I teach. Alright, so Laurel, you need to thread your sewing machine. I'm on a short bus this morning. It's almost afternoon. I slept in a little bit today. I'm off work. I'm dreading tomorrow. The boss lady said we have to get everything done. So I might be there till 6 o'clock. Good grief. <clears throat> They're getting ready for the 4th of July weekend, I guess. I don't know. It's my first year working there. I work at a motel. I do air and bees too on the side. Air and bees, you get paid more. But there's only just me, so I can only do at least two a day. And they're usually on a Friday or a Saturday. <clears throat> so. I can only handle two at a time. Some of them are huge. One of them I used to clean last year. Um, it was... How many bedrooms was that? One had two beds and one, two... It was a three bedroom, but it had four beds. And two ba three bathrooms. It had three bathrooms. And it was three stories. <laughs> I had to do laundry. And she has those real thick towels. Plus she's got a ton of beach towels. So it takes forever to do laundry. But she has extra sheets and um, towels. So uh, I could take them home or go to the laundromat or do them at her house. All right, so I started, oh shoot, why'd I do that? Uh-oh. I'm not thinking. I'm still asleep, y'all. Say, Laura, what the heck are you doing? I want to make an oval, not a circle. Anyway, I'm gabbing. That's what the problem is. I'm gabbing. Gabbing, gabbing. All right, so... I always guesstimate. I never measure. Alright, so I think I'm gonna 
<coughs> start my oval about that much right here. All right, so let me measure it for, for y'all. It's six inches, and I'm right at three inches. I guess they make pretty good, y'all. Let me move this out of the way. All right, so you want to bend it at your three inches. Okay. I like to sew it backwards when I do an oval. I put it under there. And this is where that little pokey tool comes in handy, y'all. This little tool right here. And, and a fingernail or... <clears throat> but just don't get it underneath your needle. Try to stay either behind it or in front of it. Okay. All right, I'm woke now. <laughs> I'm pinching it together as I'm going. Can y'all see okay? I don't have any comments. All right, use your pokey tool again, and I'm going to use my scissors. You want to get that little hole closed up where you folded it. Go slow, even if you got to move your tool behind your needle. There we go. Now back stitch. Alright, now I take it off. See how tight it gets it? And now this part here, you see how it's fuzzy? I'm getting ready to show you how to do, handle that situation. I take my scissors and I cut it on an angle. I cut it on an angle. Alright. Now, well, I guess I can cut that off too. It's starting to fuzz up. Alright. Now I try, I take my thumb, put it right here. I try to get that part nice and tight too. All right, so now I'm gonna hold it, squish it, make sure it's gonna stay, and I'll put it like that. I'll put at least one or two stitches right there. And you might have to move your foot because it don't have anything to grip on. Alright, so it's starting to split up and again, so you need your tools. You need your tools. Alright. Go slow in case you hit your tool. Alright. Straighten it up. You always want to make everything nice and straight. Because that's the way it's going to come out. Um once you sew it. So I'm pushing this end down. I'm holding it. And I'm going to hold my finger right here. Okay, anytime your rope is has a little curve or a twist. That's the way it's going to come out once you're finished. So try to keep everything nice and straight if you can. Straight as you can. See, if, you, if I, I have a curve like this, guess what? That's the way the bowl is going to turn out with a curve. So you want to straighten it up. Always want it straight because your rope, um, you see how it's turning? That's, your rope has to turn and adjust as you're sewing. So if you're not giving it any flexibility to turn and adjust 
you're going to have twists and wonkiness. Does that make sense? Yeah, the curves are kind of hard. Just go slow. I'm holding it with my thumb over here and turning it. Go slow. Make sure you're hitting both of your ropes. Rows of ropes. Alright, so I'm going to make sure it's nice and straight. <laughs> Alright, so I wrapped it around. I push this part down, make sure it's nice and flat. Turning. Now while you're turning it, sometimes your, your rope will move. So make sure everything's tight. And then you can give it a little squish at the end to make it, you know what I mean. Squish, squish, flat, push it down. Alright, so I'm going to come around with the rope again. Make sure this is nice and tight or snug. I'm going to use my left hand to turn, going around that curve. The next few curves are easier. Alright, by me turning it, you see what it did? It, it kind of twisted up like that. So make sure you're doing it straight. Yeah, a lot of people have a hard time with the oval bowls. And I'll show you why in a bit. They mainly have a hard time with the, the walls. I do too. But it's because of this part right here. I have a big... This thing, let me measure it. This thing here has got to be about four inches. Ah, it's almost four and a half inches. Um, but mine doesn't open. And I have this little needle thing on the side. It gets in my way. Um, so when you're going around to get your wall, even this part of my sewing machine um, is... It's really long. So if you have a, a newer, or I mean an older sewing machine that has the short part right here, you can turn your bowl upside down and let your sewing machine hang off the edge of your table and let your bowl, you know, hang off as you're sewing. That'll help you too. <clears throat> Especially when you're doing like pocketbook. So I can get the, some speed going and then I'm going to show you how I start making the eye shape. So I'm going to be adding pieces of rope. I'm going to add pieces of rope to get it, you know, wider on the sides. And it'll still be narrow on the ends. I'm going to be teach, teaching y'all some tricks that I do all the time. Use some of your techniques from other projects or your other crafts that you do in your bowls. You know how you crochet, you increase and decrease? Well, that's what we're kind of doing with the rope today. I'm not sure about knitting. Um, I'm not a knitter. I tried knitting, but it's not my, I 
I got a knitting machine though. One of those crank ones. <laughs> That's the only knitting I do. <laughs> Alright, I'm getting some rope out here. Alright, my oval's starting to get bigger. And I need to look at it right quick. So I can add. Alright. So we gotta pull this out before we get carried away. And y'all know I'll get carried away. Alright, I am at five inches. And this was six inches, right? Okay, so now I need to start adding my rope pieces. Alright. This one, I think I can... Yeah. I'm going to cut this one in half. So we're adding pieces to our project. Pieces of rope. And you got to make sure you pull out some of this filler. or Otherwise, you're going to have lumpy bumps. All right, I pull out about an inch. All right, so I'm gonna put my hand here and pull it back the other way. Come on. Some of it moved while I was pulling. All right, so I'm gonna pull, cut some more of that off. Because you want your ends to be nice and flat. Okay. I keep pulling it and it's going the other way. Alright, so my ends are flat. I could squish it. Alright, that's one. Alright, we're going to pull this one. I got that filler out. Now, if you have a rope that doesn't have filler, like the um, solid cotton, um, just cut it on a sharp angle. Now, if you have cotton rope with a cotton core, you want to pull it out and do the same thing I'm doing now. If you have a core on the inside of your rope. Okay. All right, ladies, you ready? Here, let me zoom in a bit for you so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> I'm going to put my needle down. I'll open this part up. Alright, you just want to make sure this is nice and flat. You'll stick it in there. You use your tool. Get in there nice and tight. Pack it in there. Put your needle back down. Did you see what I just did? Can you see what I just did? I don't see any comments, y'all. If you're commenting, I don't I don't see them. Let me see what I can do here. I don't know. I'm not getting any comment. Anyway, I'm explaining as I go. Alright, so I put the needle down, the foot's down. Now I'm using my flat scissors that have a nice point. So I'm pushing up against. Make sure you're holding this still in the same place. But I'm going to stitch this and this rope. Okay? We're going to move it over. Make sure it stayed in there. Because it will try to slide out on you. I think it slid a little bit. It's alright. Okay. Just keep stitching that piece to your face. And now we're going to get up here. We're going to make sure this one's nice and flat. So we're going to take and squish it. And you're going to need this. <clears throat> I'm still stitching the piece we added. Alright, back stitch two. 
take it off. It moved a little bit on me, but it's all right. You see how, it, you see what I just did? So this part here is still open. Now we're going to go back up here. We're going to do it again, but we're going to stitch this one to this one. Even though it moved on me. It's nice and straight. Ain't moved on. Alright, I'm getting to the part that we ended here. We want that to be nice and tidy. Okay, now we can finish stitching to the other side. So all you're doing is building your side so it'll get wider and then it'll come to a, a somewhat of a point. Uh-oh, I went too far. I went too far. I think. Yeah, I did. Alright, so we're right here. So I want to go straight across to the other side. Now we're going to add the other piece. We're going to flatten it out. We're going to stick it in the crevice. Okay? Let me put my needle down and get it ready. Alright, so you need your pokey tool. Okay, you're just going to push it down in there so the fuzzies don't show. You see that? You just push the fuzzies down in there. Okay? Put the string back under my foot here. And use your tool for that too. Okay, I need my other. Stay in place. Don't move like the other one. Okay, we're going to move it over. So we're going to stitch this to this. And this is just going to help you keep it nice and snug. Okay, it might not be a perfect oval, but all right. So now we're gonna push this part down. I like to lift the rope up and kind of push it. Now you're gonna use your pokey tool. Okay, we're gonna make sure everything is nice and tight, and that piece right there that we're trying to tuck, you want to hold it. Lost grip here. All right, back stitch. Is this making any kind of sense to y'all? Okay. Now I'm gonna go right back. You see, we just added in the short piece. Well, hi Virginia. Hi Rhonda. I see comments now. <laughs> I'm trying to make a oval and make it sort of like an eye shape. So I'm adding in scraps of rope pieces to make it get wider on the on the sides. So it'll widen this way and you still have kind of a point. Alright, so I need my pokey tool or my stiletto right there where we added the rope in there. this make any sense to y'all you see what I'm doing all right see here's the end of the rope that we added we're gonna tuck that little fuzzy in there as good as we can and then we're gonna use our thumb to hold it and we're gonna bring out the pokey tool again
Be nobody will even know you add a rope. Only me and you. <laughs> it's me and you. I see if when you're trying to come up with some some off the wall cool design, that's what you can do. You can add pieces of rope into your project to get it to get that form that you want. Somebody was asking me how they could um, make a guitar wall hanging with rope. I was trying to explain to her how to do that. I don't know if she knew what I was talking about or not. But Alright, so I think I should add another piece. This time I'm going to do it back a little bit further so we can use a smaller piece. You see how it's starting to get wider? I don't know if y'all can see that or not. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to cut some of this back some. Alright, so I'm going to add another piece in here. Do, 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 do. Here, let me zoom out. Can you see where I added? All right, right here. Right there. And right here. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna add another piece. Like this one here. I think, let me see. I think I'm going to add, what is this, three inches? Nope, this is two and a half inches. I think the other one was three inches, wasn't it? Alright, so I'm going to cut this one. At same size. <coughs> okay, see the pieces I'm adding? Two small pieces. Okay, one side's already been pulled. So make sure you cut your little filler out. If you're using a solid rope, just cut it on an angle. Come on, get up there. I pulled it too far. <laughs> get yourself in there. When you mess with rope, pulling it it tightens there we go all right so i'm gonna tuck it in here again put my needle down with my foot up so i'm gonna open it up we're gonna put that in there this is gonna take a you know longer than usual for making a bowl but So I tucked that in there pretty good. Put my foot down. Bring out my tool again. Now this part you got to hold. Because it will start moving on you. The piece that you added. You can put pins in it. It's fine. Alright. I tend to hold it with my finger. Okay, we're moving it over so we can stitch this rope to this rope. Moving it over, I mean the needle. Okay, it didn't move. Good job. Okay, now we're getting to the other end. Pokey tool. Two back stitch. Take it off. Can y'all see the, the wonkiness it just made it do? Made it do? <laughs> Here, let me zoom in. Alright, so there's the end of it. Can 
can see that. Just, I like to like put the strands down. It's got a little gap right now, so this is where your tool comes in handy. Just push it together. Alright, now we can go around to the other side and add the other piece. I went too far again. Moral. Bye. It ain't nothing but thread. Okay. Can you see how the wonkiness just happened? Can you see the wonky? I'm, I'm building out the sides. So this side has two. And this one only has one right now. You see how I'm building it out? <laughs> it looks like an egg now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my foot down, my needle down, cut my strings first. It's not quite perfect, but hey. All right, Laura, you got to cut your ends. One, all right, okay. So I pulled enough for it both sides to be flat. That works. All right, let me look at this now. Lift my foot up, open it up. Get these pieces of threads that I didn't pull off. There we go. Get out of the way. I'll just stick it in there. Pokey tool. I'm just combing it down and sticking it in there, and then I'm going to hold it. Put my needle down. All right, I need my other pokey tool. want to hold it because that piece you added will will try to move on you it'll try to slide that's what happened to me on the other side and it's trying to do it now you could probably put some glue on it but the pressure from the foot is making it do that all right so I got this side prepared I'm sewing the piece that I added to the base, two stitch back. Now we're going to sew the outside to it. Oh, it attached a little bit. It's cool. It'll be all right. Yeah, my, my oval's kind of wonky. <laughs> It's pretty good for um, not prepping. All right, so the pokey tools come in handy. And I think it's probably the size I want it now, but I need to go measure. Pretty cool, huh, y'all? So just think out of the box. Think about different um, crafts that you do. How you can do something totally different to these rope bolts. And crocheting increase, decrease. That's pretty much, you know, what we just did. Alright, so I need to look at this. It's a funny wonky, by that piece moving, it made me get a weird wonk, but it's cool. 
We get a weird walk here. Let me see. Oh, it's almost perfect. I need to go one more round. Looky there. As a friend of mine used to say, what you say? Yeah, looky there. Or I had another friend who used to say, look out now. <laughs> I got cool friends, y'all. I got the friends that make you laugh. Look at the comments in a second. In a minute. Yeah, I got a wonky, wonky looking circle here. Okay. Look at comments. Making the base for bowls is very similar to making jelly roll rugs. Yes. Yes, they truly are. Okay, so here's my design that I hand embroidered. This is a stencil, a quilt stencil. I ran across it at their store. All right, look at there, y'all. Am I still zoomed in? Okay. Um... I'm trying to see here how much more I need to move it. All right, do I want these points to be this close? I'm looking. I gotta have it just perfect, right? this way I'm, I'm trying to get it nice and center that looks perfect all right so I'm gonna flip it over I got a string that I missed I don't know it's a string for the housekeeper okay trace around it is my ink pen working Yeah, y'all can do, I don't know, the clover. I'm not sure if that would work but by adding. It might. But you could do that like a heart. <coughs> hey, it looks like I did pretty darn good here. All right. See that? I did pretty darn good. Y'all see my, my stitches, though. So, the stitches that I've been doing are the Japanese uh, stitches. I can't remember how, how to say it, but it's like a, um, sort of like a basting stitch, I want to think. I don't know. Anyways, it's just cool. I used to embroider a lot when I was a teenager. I love um, hand sewing though. I did a quilt, quilt squares with hands, hand sewing. All right. Now the bottom, you can see my little ends. So you can see where my ends are right here. It's cool. Don't worry about it. You can put a piece of cork on it. 
All right, make sure I got it in the same place. So I cut about a scant around my circle, just enough to hang off the edge to tuck it between your rope. And your rope is a 3 16th, that's what I'm using. But Okay, so now I'm going to do one round a plain rope around it and then I'm gonna start tilting and then I'm gonna add some ribbon and then I'm gonna put these little tiny these tiny wood beads and then I found a bigger one that has a bigger hole I'm gonna put that on the end of the rope maybe <laughs> maybe I didn't spray any base spray on it you can. Last time I did it, my hand stuck to myself. Got it on my hand. It was a sticky mess. Alright, so I've got to trim some of this already. Because I want more than a scant. It's alright. Don't worry about it. If somebody wants a perfect bowl, tell them to try to make one themselves. <laughs> it's perfect the way I want it. Oh yeah, I did a good job, y'all. Woohoo! I did a good job. It's fitting my pattern just fine. No, it ain't either. I see it. I see what y'all don't see. Alright, so I'm having to pull a little bit because it's alright. It's stretchy. Y'all think I'm crazy? Just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna start tilting. I need to move these pieces of the rope out of my way. I don't need those anymore. Um, it kind of looks like an egg, but it 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 fit in there. All right, I'm gonna tilt it all the way up. Let's see what this egg-shaped oval bowl turns out to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I might need some thread in a minute. Let me double check. No, I got plenty. I got plenty, plenty, plenty. So I have it tilted all the way up. As y'all know, my nose on my sewing machine is four and a half inches. So it's like totally impossible to get a straight, straight side on my sewing machine. Sometimes I can get real close, but... See, my sewing machine does pretty good, um... Not just the plain rope, but when I wrap it, it gets thicker and my sewing machine struggles. But she's doing good right now. Oh, Chatterbox got quiet. Okay, the bowl's hitting that little thing on the side of my sewing machine, but... Hey, this is going to be cool looking. This is definitely going to be a different bowl.
that. Let go. The air condition vents by my foot. My foot's getting cold. Anybody else so barefoot? <laughs> my mom, she used to play the organ. She had a, um, what was it? I can't name it so much. Oh, so. oh, it was a bald one. Um, she would always take her shoes off and she'd be sock footed when she played it. Oregon have um, those things on the bottom. Don't ask me what the name of those are. Anyway, it was like the keys on the, on your feet. There was like, I don't know, 20 of them? There's quite a few of them down there. It's a big old organ. Ah, poor mom. She's in a nursing home. I wonder if she plays the... Oh, she don't play piano, though. They got a piano there, but... I don't know if she... You know she can still do that. Alright, I think I'm going to add some ribbon to it. Round and round we go. And I'm stuck somehow. What? Oh, I'm stuck on that darn thing on the side of my sewing machine. Alright, so my, where I put the little tail, I always use that as a reference for my, where I started and where I stopped. Okay, so I'm going to add some of that ribbon, or not ribbon, trellis lace. And let me cut my strings off right quick. Alright ladies, it's wonky. It's cat catawonky here. What the heck? Hmm, I'm looking at it. See what I did do wrong. I think it was... I don't know. <laughs> Bad teacher. It's cool. Nobody will even notice it, right? Maybe. Alright, so I'm going to use this uh, trellis lace. I'm going to do one round of wrap with this. Laurel, your video is too long. Be yeah, alright. I ain't had no complaints yet. I've been getting a lot of good comments about how I show the whole process and I don't speed it up where you, like some people do. So thank you for all the nice comments. I do my best. Well, kind of. Okay. I'm guesstimating that this is enough for one round. <clears throat> Make sure I'm zoomed in or out. Well, hi, Dorothy. Oh, hey, Karen, Crafty Bear. I remembered. All right, I usually do it on an angle this way with the end and hold it with my thumb. And then I'll come over and I cross over with this trellis lace. I'll hold it, come around the next one. So I'm not, I don't know, should I do it? 
I'm going to look see how I want it. I don't know if I want it close together or spread apart. I think I want it spread apart. Uh -oh, one of my scissors is getting caught on it. So the key thing when you're wrapping with ribbon or trellis lace is to cut it about a yard. You won't get so many tangles or twists. And then it's it's pretty easy to add it. So I'm I'm spacing it apart. See? I'm spacing it. And then I come over on an angle, leaving a gap. Uh oh, I'm twisted. Hold on. I think I'm twisted off the end here. Okay. Got something on my rope. But you think that was a cool idea with adding the little pieces of rope? Even though it I didn't quite center it just right. And that one moved on me. But it's cool be all right it's handmade what was it Bob Marley it said everything's gonna be all right was it Bob Marley I can't remember all right it's starting to twist let me get this end undone here Yep, the smaller the pieces of whatever you're wrapping with, the longer it's going to take. <laughs> but the outcome is kind of cool looking. See, I didn't want to add fabric. I thought it would take away from the look that I was trying to accomplish. I have done a whole bowl with wrapping with just trellis lace, and I did it um, tight together, <coughs> and that, that bowl turned out nice. It had a cool uh, texture to it, too. I actually sold that bowl. I sold it, I think it was around Christmas this past year. It took a while to sell it, but I sold it. Takes the right person. Just like my pocketbooks. I got a couple of pocketbooks that I made, I don't know, two years ago. People will come up and look at them and then they'll look at the price tag and turn around <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> so I don't go out and make a whole bunch of pocketbooks because they, I don't know, maybe it's just where I, where I go to sell them. And I will not make one unless you pay for at least half of it for a special order. Because that's a lot of rope and a lot of time. Even a, a bigger bowl, like a huge bowl, I, I won't make any more of those unless you pay for it or pay half. Because I have gotten stuck with a couple of them. Ended up taking one or two of them apart. Alright, let me put a clip in it. I think I got enough here. <clears throat> but you got to make one so, so people can see what you can do. Alright, here we go. We're going to do the trellis lace. Got something right there. I always go back further where I ended. I don't backstitch. 
I'll backstitch, you know, most of the time when I, um, before I cut it, cut the thread. Here we go. So you definitely got to add in your pieces. Symmetrical on both sides. I just ran out of bobbin. I thought I had enough. <coughs> and make sure it doesn't move on you like it did me. It's cool. Alright, let me cut this piece off here. Because that will get your sew machine a nest. It will mine anyway. Ba -ba -da -ba. I got it back further where it ended. I got all of this still left in my way. It's okay. Here we go again. I keep getting stuck on that little needle threader lift thing on the side. Anytime your sides start to swoop, swoop, hang down, it's usually because of the side of your sewing machine. Cutting threads here. Got one more. There we go. I'm on this needle threader thing. There's a little lever on the side of my sewing machine. It keeps getting in my way. Alright, so I need to wrap a couple more here. Alright, I think that looks perfect. I'm holding it with my fingers. And I need to move one of them. And there we go. Perfect ending. Okay, so I'm going to do another round. And then I'm going to attempt to add some beads. Those tiny beads. And I'm going to show you how I do that. See that? <laughs> I've taken the lever off, but there's still a little piece of metal, and it still gets in the way. All right, I need to cut this before I get it all tangled up and sewed up. Save this. Save it. It'll come in handy. You make tassels with it, or add it into a, a wrap. If you're doing multiple pieces of fabric, colors, or whatever, you always add it to a wrap bowl. Alright, this thing is in my way. It's in my way. So I'm going to do two rounds. Get off of there. Yep, our saw machines were not made to make bowls, that's for sure. <clears throat> now if they can come up with a saw machine, you don't have to do bobbins all the time. Alright, so, time to add some beads. I'm going to backstitch right quick.
Ooh, y'all got a big view on that one. See the trellis lace? Isn't it a cool effect, though? I got y'all zoomed in. <laughs> okay. Um, beads. Here's my beads. I need my needle. I use this uh, nylon thread. Um, I used to use this when I did those bracelets. My beaded bracelets. Oh, crap. Where's the end? Is that it? There it is. See, it's, it's stuck. It's like a waxed um, yarn thread. But this is what I'm going to use today. And a needle that has a pretty good hole. Let me see if I can thread it. Oh, I did it. I did it. See a lotus thread. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to do one strand. This is some real sturdy um, thread. Don't forget about the pin cushions. If you're interested in a dress form pin cushion, just send me an email or. Alright, so. I'm going to add these beads to my string. Except this one. This one has a bigger hole. It's, it's sort of like a pony what they call a pony bead, but it's a wood bead. Sometimes you buy beads and you think the hole's bigger and you, you get them and they're not. <laughs> I'm getting ready to show you how to use them anyway and don't drop them all on the floor. You might need that one bead. <laughs> no. Ooh, the wheels on my... Um, chair or full of thread. That darn housekeeper, I tell you, I don't know what I'm going to do with her. But I'm adding him, adding him, adding it to this. My knot is not going to hold it. But it'll be alright. We ain't going to let it get that far. I don't know how many I need, so I'm just going to add them. I'm using all the tan color ones. So we're going to add the beads, you'll see, you'll see, if you're not interested, you can, you're going to miss out, you're going to miss out, anybody got the idea of what I'm getting ready to do with these beads, and why I'm stringing them? Anybody? See, this is a craft from a um, a craft that you do. Maybe you might make jewelry, you might macrame, but you can add it to your bowl. I don't know how many I need. I'm just putting them on. I put them all on now. I crochet like this too sometimes. I'll add all a bunch of beads and then I'll crochet around the beads. And I've made necklaces like that. I've actually crocheted around a, a big bead and made earrings. <laughs> I can't help it, y'all. Once I learn something, I get another idea. Sorry, I, I probably made it worse for y'all's bowl addiction. <laughs> hey, join me. Peer, peer pressure. <laughs> peer pressure. Na, 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 na. Hey, I got three left in here. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. Come on, finger. Get in there. 
Get these brown ones out of the way. Alright, I got a few brown ones in here. Put these over here. I might not need all these beads, but... Alright, there's one. There's two. Come on. Get in there. Alright. I know you're in there. I'll put you over here. Oh, nope. Put you on that needle. All right, so I put a little knot in it. <coughs> hmm, I probably should do that first. Anywho, so I'm gonna put the string at the end here. Now, oh shit! Don't you come up? Oh. Uh, told you not to do that. I dropped a bead somewhere. There it is. I might need that bead. He wanted to be at the other end. Alright. So I'm going to put the needles back through this one just to keep it in place. While I make a mess. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Let's try this one more time. Alright, so I'm going to put my thread right here. I'm going to put it under the foot. Put my needle down. So the, the part that I put the knot, I'm going to put it in there. Okay. I'm going to do one or two stitches right quick just to secure that little knot. Alright, now we're going to add a bead. We're going to put that bead in there. Say, Laura, what the heck are you doing now? I don't know. I'm just trying it. Alright, so I'm going to put my needle and stuff on the left side out of my way. See, I was going to do it with bigger beads, but I think it would get in the way of my foot. Okay, so I'm going to sew a couple stitches. Back stitch. I'm going to lift my foot up. I'm going to back my bead all the way back there. You see that? I'm going to put the bead behind my foot. And... Press it down. Come on. Get down in there. I might need my pokey tool. Okay. Pokey tool. Bees all the way back there. Alright. We're going to back stitch that a little bit. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to lift it up. Push the bead up. We're going to push it all the way in there. Don't worry about the thread right now. You can trim it later. And put your foot down. Now you could uh, go ahead and pin it if you wanted. Alright. Same thing again. Slide the next one up. Go behind the foot. Get yourself up there. <laughs> Put your foot down. Pokey tool. Alright, let's see if this is going to be what I want it to do. Okay. It ain't too bad doing it that way. You can see the thread. Um, it's going to move and come out. Um, 
You might have to handle it. What do you think? I think it might be better to maybe use a, a cotton cord. Hmm. Where is my cotton cord? Oh, not that. That ain't what I'm looking for. So I wouldn't use just a sewing thread. But y'all get the picture, right? So you can thread it. I got some cotton um, twine somewhere. Huh. But anyway, it's an idea for y'all to, to control your beads and whatnot. But that's going to be cute. So I'm going to find my cotton thread and I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. Alright, ladies. So you got to see how I added. Ooh, y'all are zoomed in. You got to see how I added rope to make an oval tear attempt. <laughs> if it didn't move, it'd be perfect. Right now it's cattywonkered. She looked cattywonkered, so I got to do some fixing on this. So I got some cotton twine that'll fit in the hole. Um, these, these holes are big enough to put the cotton twine in. But that'll control your beads a little bit for a smaller bead that won't fit on your rope. Or you can just hand sew them. So. But anywho, I think I need a thicker cord if I do it that way. Anywho, y'all have fun. And then I'm going to add this wood bead. It has a bigger hole. To the end and then i'm gonna maybe do a tassel so there you go you got to add rope pieces of rope so don't throw your scraps away see that one there we used one like this and we folded it in half and cut it and then we added to make a a bigger oval all right ladies y'all think of cuckoo it'd be all right I am most of the time. What was that? You noticed I made a split for the rope. Come out straight in a row. I told it in the beginning, I think. All I did was add um, a small piece of rope. Well, hi, Jan. I didn't see you. How are you? Well, if you speed mine up, <laughs> you might miss something. <laughs> Just saying. But anyway, um, yep. So keep your little pieces, especially if you want to be creative and uh, make a, diff a different shape or form. You can um, add pieces of rope to accomplish a, a you know, a hump or something without a gap in, bet in, in between the ropes. All right, I hope that helped y'all out. And if you're in the group and you try something like this, don't forget to say, hey, Laurel, um, I did what you did on YouTube. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up and comment so you can make any kind of comment. Um, the comments and the thumbs up just shows YouTube that, hey, we need to get Laurel's channel out there. And there's a little heart shape that has a dollar sign in it. That's like a little tip jar. It's called a super thanks. Um, that helps me buy supplies and keep videos coming for y'all. And joining, uh, I ain't figured out what's going on with that yet. Um, I gotta figure that part out. I, I did everything you're supposed to do, but people are saying they can't find the join button. Um, anyway, we'll figure that out. And don't forget, you can add jewelry. 
All right, so this is an earring. A one earring. It's like a vintage earring. You can add something like this to your bowl. This used to be a bracelet. I thought that was kind of cool. Can you see that? <clears throat> um, I got this one too. This one kind of looks like a steampunk, you know, with the clock thingies. But it, anyway, you can add stuff like this to your bowls. If you got one earring, it's kind of cool. You got a broken, a broken brooch. Look at that one. Isn't that pretty? You add something like this to your bowls. This thing weighs a ton. Yeah, just get creative with it. Have fun. Alright, so I'm going to see if I can find that <laughs> cotton cord I have. I don't know where it's at. If you only see my craft room. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Love y'all. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for all the good comments. Thanks for the uh, super thanks. The little tip jar. Um, don't forget to uh, click on the subscribe button. Um, it doesn't cost anything to click on it. Um, the little heart with the dollar sign is a little tip jar if you want to send out a little love towards making stuff on videos. Appreciate it. Um, so I guess I'll see y'all next Saturday. And when I finish this bowl, I'll post it on the, um, on the group page. Love y'all. And like I said, if you want one of these dress forms, she's a little messy right now. But I got like 10 of them. Just send me an email and I will get one out to you. I don't know about uh, overseas though. Uh, cost more than um, whatever you buy to send, so that's that's nuts. But I wish they changed that. Anyway, love y'all. I'm Gavin. Love y'all. See you next Saturday or on the group.